Hi friends, welcome to this latest in a series of Textures of the Faith, Textures of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's our Lenten series as we look at different textures that are found in the Bible and we touch those textures and we learn that each of them has a message for us about the great sacrifice Jesus underwent to purchase us from sin and death and the devil. Let's think about leather today. The texture of leather is one texture that many people really appreciate. In the past, we've covered goat's hair garments. We've covered sand stuck to your legs. We've covered the texture of fruit pulp. Leather is one that many people are attracted to. You know, having leather shoes, leather jacket, leather car seat, leather steering wheel, um, leather briefcase. These denote a kind of luxury for those of us who want to try something leather, right? Well, is there leather in the Bible? It's animal skin, right? It is literally an animal skin. So indeed, from ancient times, there has been leather used and referenced in Scripture. And the first time was when Adam and Eve, you remember, they were made naked, without clothes. And when they disobeyed the Lord God's command to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, of which he commanded them not to eat, they became afraid. Their eyes were open, it says. They were aware that they were naked. They became ashamed, and they ran to cover themselves from the presence of the Lord with leaves. Here we have a picture of contrition. Contrition is the awareness of one's guilt before the Lord that produces feelings. Take your pick of shame, of remorse, of sorrow, and when they heard the Lord God coming, they were afraid and hid themselves. Fear. We feel the sting of contrition, don't we? It's not something we like to keep there. We want to cover it up. We want to bury these potential feelings of fear, of sadness, of remorse, of guilt, of anger at ourselves, anger at God or anger at somebody else, that somebody has to pay for how I feel. We realize that these things need to be covered up or we can't survive. Adam and Eve covered them up with leaves, but when the Lord God spoke to them and dealt with them in compassion and in steadfast love, eventually he clothed them, it says, with skins. The first time leather or animal skins is mentioned is here. When the Lord, before he cast them out of the garden, before he barred them from entrance to his paradise, yet he covered them with garments of leather to make up for their foolish covering of leaves and to do for them what they could not do for themselves in covering up their shame and comforting, consoling us in our contrition. That is God's great goal for you, is that you have the consolation of Jesus Christ who forgives and overlooks and does away with your iniquities. And so the first time leather is mentioned in the Bible is it's a gracious covering of our shame. Later on, when God decided that he was going to dwell in the midst of his people Israel, after they had come out of Egypt, he said, I will make a tent there, and there I will meet with the people of Israel, and it shall be sanctified by my glory. I will dwell among the people of Israel, and I will be their God, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God, who brought them up out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. And he ordered that the tent in which he would dwell would be covered with, you guessed it, animal skins, tanned ram skins and goat skins, the most outward covering of that tent was going to be skin, was going to be leather. God was speaking to the people that it was his gracious desire to dwell with them. And how they saw the tent was that he was covered in skins. It's a kind of a mysterious thing. I'm not trying to explain why this is. But what they saw was God's dwelling among them, covered in animal skins. Now, there's, of course, unsavory production uh, to give us leather. Have you, have you read about this? Have you heard about this? What does it take to make leather? Well, leather is, of course, animal skin. It's, it's made of collagen, the main protein. 
constituting skin. And in order to discourage bacteria on this on this tissue, all kinds of things are done in the tanning process. Now, from the ancient times until today in some places, you would have to soak the animal skins in a solution of dung, urine, brains, all these other animal products. And it probably required a guy to traipse around in a bath of this stuff for hours in order to soften the stuff, to get rid of hair and fat, to remove other biological components and to kind of pickle the, the skin of the animal to create leather. Suffice it to say, this was an unsavory process, as I'm sure you can imagine. Probably the smelliest and worst job in order to create something useful and to something uh, desirable in the ancient world and even today. So, St. Peter, when he was establishing the church in the city of Joppa, he had to stay, or perhaps the Lord directed him to stay to, uh, at the house of Simon the Tanner. There he was with a man who was doing this work day by day. The Jews of Peter's day, of course, had concluded that tanners, the men who were making leather, were unfit. They were unfit to come to church. They were unclean. Why? Because of the contact they had with carcasses and with filth and with urine and dung, brains, all this stuff that had to do with animals. They might not have had a law of God that said tanners can't come to church, but they had decided you are a sinner. You are dealing with unclean materials. This is too much. I also know that um, there were men in the scriptures who wore leather as a characteristic of who they were. So John the Baptist, right? He wore a leather belt around his waist. And Elijah, the prophet from old, he wore a leather belt around his waist. This is an interesting point to consider as Hebrews takes it up, talking about these holy people who were driven to the outskirts of town, like Peter, like John the Baptist, perhaps most of all, like Elijah. Elijah was the one who spoke to the king words of judgment, and then he was forced to run away, hide in the wilderness. Now, listen to this verse in Hebrews 11. It'll all come together here as we hear what Hebrews 11 has to say. Referring to those people who lived by faith in God, it says some of them were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. Others were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Driven to the outskirts, driven out of the garden, driven out of paradise, we wear the skins that God provides us. We must acknowledge, just as these individuals must have, that they were living in the consequence of a sinful fallen world. They were carrying the sting of contrition with them throughout their life. We are too. We are not in paradise anymore. And we are not in paradise yet. We're still outside the garden and we still feel the sting of our guilt. It is there. It's something God brings to our attention, to our memory, to our consciousness, whether it be in fear or in sorrow or in regret and remorse or in anger or in feelings of shame. We are going about in the earth like these holy people, not home yet, still under the cross, But this is what Jesus talks about when he, he talks about what he is bringing. He's bringing this life um, to us that we could live in it. He talks about uh, a bottle of wine, right? A bottle of wine in the days of Jesus was made out of leather. He said the old wine skins can only hold old wine. Because if you put new wine in a new wine skin, uh, the new wine, you put the new wine in an old wine skin, the new wine will release gases and it'll blow up the old one, which is already stretched to its limits. You've got to put new wine into a new wineskin, new leather. Jesus is talking about new leather, that his doctrine, his life, the grace that he is bringing 
um, is one which requires a whole new way of looking at the world. It's a whole new way of living. It's living by faith in him, living by grace, and not by works of the law. Living by his mercy, and not by our own wisdom, not by our own riches, not by our own strength, but only by his. That is something only he can bring, and it is new to us. Finally, we look at how Jesus, the end of his life, he too felt the sting of our contrition, if I can put it that way, where we had merited the fear, the sorrow, the shame, and the contrition for our sins. He tastes it himself. And it particularly becomes intense when he is sentenced to be flogged. Pontius Pilate orders that Jesus be punished. And Pilate, Pilate is trying to spare Jesus from being crucified. Ultimately, we know it went that way anyway. But he ordered Jesus to be whipped in order to satisfy the crowds. And so you know what the soldiers did. They picked up their whips. Flagellum is what they were called. They were, you know, they were weapons. They were made out of leather. We find a description of these, these uh, whips as being thongs of leather of different lengths, all tied together. Maybe you have three, five, I don't know, different lengths. And at the end, a projectile, a, a piece of lead, a tooth, a bone, whatever it is, tied into the leather. And they're at different lengths so that when you are whipped, they all hit different places of your skin. Jesus then feels the sting of this leather across his body again and again. And while he is being whipped, certainly it's cutting into the outer tissues of his skin, the tissues underneath, going down into the muscles, I don't know, bearing bones perhaps, as it rips and destroys the skin of his flesh. Then they put on the garment over his wounds, right? And I suppose he's able to wear his garment as he carries the cross. While the wounds are beginning to congeal and cling. When they tear that off again, opens it all back up afresh. And they place his back, which has been scoured up and sliced up, onto the cross, nail him there, lift him up, so that for him to be able to breathe while hanging there, he must continue pushing up with his feet, rubbing his back against the cross over and over just to be able to breathe. And so we see it's the skin of Jesus, which is lacerated and ruined out of love for us. He feels the sting of our contrition. Imagine the grief and the shame and the sorrow which passed over his heart in waves. Isaiah 53 says, See if there is any sorrow like his sorrow. We can remember how we feel when we are afraid, when we are ashamed, when we are angry, when we are sorrowful, remorseful, regretful. But it does not compare to what Jesus underwent to cover us with his own sacrifice. Thus, God welcomes us back into paradise with a new covering, something new. And that is our Lord Jesus' love. The donation of his body, his flesh and blood, his own skin, as a covering for us, that God might truly dwell among us, that he would be our God, we would be his people. This is the message, the texture of leather speaks to us in the Bible. Have a blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.